اه بس احنا قلوبنا مشغولة بحياتك بالدرجة الأولى عايزينك تسمع وتصلي وصلاتك تصبح مقبولة وتسلم للرب طريقة وتلاقي مشاكلك محلولة في رسالة جاية لك من القلب رسالة من القلب رسالة من القلب In John chapter 3 and verse 14 As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have, a, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through but that the world through him may be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And today I want to address the eternal or divine salvation, and that is the salvation that God gives us, which in which part he says, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, the gift that God gives, which is called eternal life, is very much the same way. <clears throat> it gives, and it gives, and it gives, and it continues to give, and God says, wait on. There's some more coming. Some more coming. And that today I'd really like to speak about this eternal life. That so many times we think is just life eternal. That means life that never ends. Life that never finishes. That's sometimes how we understand everlasting or eternal life. But the truth is, it carries in it, or it carries with it, a lot more than what you think about the length of that life. Well, first of all, I'd really like to say uh, in two words that this eternal life is one, a promise from God. It is a promise from God. However, it is a conditional promise. In other words, you cannot receive it except if you believe on his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear. Whoever believeth on him, who is him? Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? Because he is the eternal one. He is the one that was from the very beginning. Yet he became flesh and tabernacled or dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as the only glory of God the Father. Filled with grace and truth. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. He is the one that entered this world miraculously through the virgin birth. He's the one that lived in this life without sin. Yet, he paid the sin. He paid for the sin of the whole world. As John the Baptist said about him, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Only by believing on him you can have the fulfillment of that promise. You see, it is conditional promise. And God has actually said that without the Son, you cannot have eternal life. That's why the Bible continues on with the um, uh, verse after that. And he says, For he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because we already are in sin. We have been born in sin. But God has made a way out. He's made a deliverance. A salvation. That whosoever believes on Jesus Christ. 
can have eternal life. Now, let me just say a word about this believing. Sometimes we think it's just if we say a prayer, then, then God de delivered us. And, you know, sometimes we really understand things in a very shallow way. And let me just try and explain to you. It's not a prayer that saves you. It's not a baptism that saves you. It's not a church that saves you. The truth is, the Bible is very clear. For is, there is no salvation in any other. No other name. It's not a church. It's not your works. It's not what you think. It is Christ who saves. He is the only one that can save you and me. And that's why the condition is whosoever believes on him. Believes means to trust. Believes means to take everything away from what I actually uh, been depending upon and put all my surrender and all my dependence on him and him alone. In other words, I'm not trusting my church. I'm not trusting the creeds and the doctrines that I believe in. I'm not even trusting, you know, uh, uh, a book that is just simply paper and ink. No. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting Him who came to deliver us. And this is why it's so important to examine ourselves. To know why I believe that I'm going to heaven. You say, isn't that arrogant that you believe that you're going to heaven? That means you're so good? No, 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 no. Please don't misunderstand me. I am not good at all. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the worst sinners. But he's good. And I'm trusting him. And he's the one that gave that promise. And so that promise is not only conditional, but that promise is also carrying with it the character of God. You see, a promise is only as good as the person that gives it, true or not. If I say something, uh, you may say, oh, well, I don't know whether he's going to deliver on his promise or not. Sometimes parents uh, give something to the children in like a promise when they know that they're not going to do it. It's like when the child goes, uh, Mom, Dad, um, you know, uh, I'd really like to go tomorrow to um, have some chocolate fudge. Would you take me to the shopping and just buy me some chocolate fudge? And the parents would say, uh, we'll see. We'll see means, no, we're not going. It's just that we don't want to cre create an argument at the time. Or sometimes I may say to my children, um, you know, or say, say to my wife, I will never, ever let anything hurt you. And now I mean it. But am I capable of doing something like that? I mean, how, how can I be assured that I'm not going to let anything... I mean... I don't even know how long I'm going to be around. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I might die, tom I might die, die tomorrow. So I cannot give such a promise because I cannot. So sometimes I give a promise with the, the, with the mind thinking, no, I'm not going to do it. And sometimes I give a promise sincere and I really want to do it, but I can't do it. But you know, with God's character... He never gives a promise that he does not want to keep. And he never gives a promise that he cannot keep. So the character that comes with that promise is perfect. And so is the promise is a perfect promise. The Bible tells us in Titus chapter 1 and verse 2 that God cannot lie. Amen? Amen? God cannot lie. So when he says to you that whosoever believes on him 
shall not perish, but have, ever, have everlasting life, then you will not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, sometimes we actually uh, think about these things and we say, uh, I mean, how can we comprehend something like that? Uh, you know, in the book of Hebrews, when um, God spoke to Abraham that he would actually bless him and bless his seed and, um, you know, give him the land and all the rest of it, that the promises that he's given, the Bible says that when he had spoken to Abraham, he found nothing greater to take an oath upon other than his own self, his own name. There's no greater than God. And so the character of God goes out with that promise. So it's not only a conditional promise. It doesn't only go with the character of God, but it also is a comprehensive promise. It is a promise that is so much comprehensive or so much, you know, encompassing everything with it that it keeps giving and giving and giving and it never finishes. Sometimes, like I said, we think of eternal life or everlasting life, just the length of that promise, but uh, length of that life. But the truth is, it's so comprehensive that it gets with it all the different blessings that God speaks to us through Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible says that from his fullness of grace, we took grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing. That's fullness of grace. You know, when we presented the, um, um, uh, the Christmas program and the songs and uh, the play, and which you've actually seen in the review as well today, it was entitled Fullness or Full of Grace. Fullness of Grace. It never runs out. It never runs dry. God's grace is amazing. And so this promise is comprehensive in that it says, shall not perish. What does that mean? You know, sometimes we speak about death as if it's almost cessation of life. But the Bible never talks about death as cessation of life. The Bible talks about death as separation. So if you are not yet reconciled to God... If you have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're dead spiritually. In other words, you are separated from God. But you know what? The Bible talks about the second death. And the second death is when a person is separated from God forever. In other words, no more chance. For the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto man to die once. And then after that is the judgment. So God says to you, if you trust on Jesus Christ, my son, then the promise is so comprehensive that you will never perish. What does that mean? In other words, it doesn't mean that you can be saved today and then perish tomorrow or perish after three years. See, when God saves you, he keeps you forever. And you're not kept by your own power. I'm not, kept by, by, I'm not kept by my own good works. No, 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 sir. The Bible is very clear that he's the one that keeps us by his power. Paul the Apostle writes to the Philippians and he says, being confident of this very thing, he that started within you a good work, will perform it even until the day of Christ. So when we believe that once saved, always saved, it's not because of how we are persevering in faith. No, no. It's because we are kept by his power and nobody can pluck us out of his hand. I hope and believe that you trust that his salvation is Eternal salvation. Yes, the outward man may perish, but the inward is renewed day by day 
through the Holy Spirit. And may God help us to understand that His promise is more than just eternal life and the length of the living, but it's eternal life in the quality, the value, the blessings, and the comprehensiveness of that promise. It carries the character of God with it. It carries a lot of values and a lot of blessings with it because it is from the fullness of grace of Jesus Christ. It's not only a promise, but then it's also a possession if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it becomes yours. It's a possession that you and I can have by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I realize that my time is finished and I don't really want to keep you much longer, but let me just very quickly say that this possession is present and also future. It is permanent. It's not something that you can own today and then, you know, you no longer own tomorrow. This possession is yours forever because Jesus' life is eternal. And he lives in me and he lives in you if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear that when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can never, ever be actually lost from him. He's the one that keeps us by our power, by his power, and our power is really not from within us, but from he who lives within us. Paul the Apostle says these words, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. But not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I live now, I live by the power of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And it's not only permanent in the sense that it's permanent for the rest of my life. It's permanent for the rest of eternity. You say, Pastor, what are we going to do in eternity? Are we going to sit each one on a cloud and play a harp? No, no, no. Please don't, don't, don't imagine that this is eternal life. It, you know, if that's all eternal life, it's really not eternal life. But the Bible gives us a glimpse of some of the things that will happen. The Bible tells us that as Christians, today we're actually waiting on something that can happen at any moment. And that is the rapture of the church. In other words, all those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who have received him, and as a result, continue to trust him and God is working in their lives, the Bible says that in a day that it, nobody knows, nobody knows the day, nobody knows the hour, nobody knows the time, the Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, in other words, you know, you know how quickly you can actually uh, twinkly lie? You know, it's uh, like a, a, a very small part even of a second. The Bible says that we shall all be taken up. First, those who have rested in Christ. They will be raised incorruptible. Then we who stay alive until the day that Jesus comes we will be changed to become immortal. And when this immortal has put on immortality, and when this corruptible has come, become incorruptible, then the promise will be fulfilled. O death, where is thy victory? O grave, where is thy sting? Praise be unto God who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus our Lord. When he takes us up into heaven, then we will celebrate the marriage, supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we will actually stand before him to be given the rewards that we have labored for. 
And it's not given on the basis of our achievements. It's given on the basis of our faithfulness. As God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But you know what? We're coming, we're coming back again to earth with Christ when he comes for the thousand year millennium on earth. You say, Pastor, I, I just can't comprehend that. Well, I can't comprehend everything either. And especially when it comes to the point where we're going to live with him forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, that's incomprehensible. You cannot comprehend everything. But you can start to taste how good the Lord is. Come unto him. For he invites you. He's initiated the love that he loved the whole world with. And he loves you and loves me and loves everyone. And he offers the gift. But it's conditional. Therefore, the invitation is whosoever will. But if you come today, then you can have that gift of God. Eternal life. Then when you first open it, you say, well, I've got my forgiveness of my salvation. I forgot my forgiveness of my sins and I've got salvation. Praise God. But then you discover that you have gifts with it. Spiritual gifts for service. Spiritual gifts that you may grow. The Holy Spirit who dwells within you, who helps you to develop. And he wants you not only to be saved from the penalty of your sin, but he also wants to save us from the power of sin. And so that's when the Holy Spirit will take the word of God and work in the child of God that he may make him like the son of God. And that's what we call sanctification. And one day, he's coming to take us. Not only going to save our spirit, not only going to save our souls, but he will save our bodies as well. For our citizenship is truly is in heaven. From whence we wait for a savior who shall change these vile bodies to be according to the power of his glory. What a tremendous, awesome God. Incomprehensible gift he gives. Why do you love him, you say? And my answer is, I love him because he first loved me. He initiated that gift. He gave the unspeakable gift, his own son. And he invites everybody to come. And you can have a gift that keeps giving and giving and giving and giving. Eternally, comprehensively, a gift that can never be taken away from you, a gift that's permanent, eternal life. You can never lose it, and it's forever in the sense that it's today, tomorrow, and for eternity. Finally, I say, it's a gift that is of great value. That Jesus said about that eternal life, I have come, I have come, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. It's not just living, it's living the best kind of life. Because when he's in it, that's the best thing it can be. The Prince of Peace can give me peace in the best circumstances and in the worst circumstances. It doesn't matter what circumstances I live in. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep my mind, thy heart in Jesus Christ. It's a life valuable so much that it keeps giving you Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. There's an invitation. And God says, Have you trusted 
my son. It's not trusting the church. It's not trusting a creed. It's not trusting your good life. Not your giving, not your baptism, not your religiosity. It's trusting the person and the work of Jesus Christ. He calls you today. Would you come to him and say, Lord, I'm a mess. I have tried to trust this and this and that, but Lord, I have no peace. Would you please come into my life and save me? Because I want to leave everything aside and trust only Jesus Christ for my salvation. to see